Hello everyone, we're here, we're ready to go, make sure everything is actually set up and ready. got everything, got this, got this, that's up. Yeah, everything should be good to go. Everyone is actually here and ready uh, on time, again, for once. Um, because, you know, people have been running late and stuff, but with being on lockdown and stuff like that and quarantine, uh, there's uh, no need for everyone to be late anymore, which is always a good fun time. So, we shall bring everyone back in once Kayla shuts her filthy mouth and uh we'll uh we'll get going right everyone's here we're good to go hi guys hello hi uh help i change scene over there we go once again oh because God. discord i don't know what's going on with the discord but it's an absolute arsehole in the fact that you guys have all rearranged your positioning in the in the video call so when I started, I had to reposition everyone again. So I think I'm going to have to do that on a weekly basis, like get everyone in as early as possible to then reset up the scene. Because it's not a matter of like people being in different places, like the the video sizes change and reposition and it's, it's irritating. But anyway, we're all here. We're all good to go. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, the last time we played, as you can see on the battle map at the present moment in time, uh, for those of you who are actually on the roll 20, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Um, a bit around A, say no more. <laughs> uh, you guys had wound up into essentially the nest or, or the um, lair of an ancient white dragon whom I wanted to, well, eat you, to be blunt. And he, he definitely tried to do so. And I'm managing to knock your wizard unconscious in an attempt to uh, finish you all off. But after yeah, uh, after several hours of a grueling fight, while being arcanely spent for the most part, you guys did successfully manage to take down this ancient white dragon. And well, that's well, where we left off. So what do you guys want to do? Anybody got a mass cure wounds or anything? That'd be real nice, right about now. Nope. Don't, don't. Uh, I don't actually do that. No. I have some spells. Left. Yeah, I can, I can help you with that. As I make my way over to temple, check myself I... over and check that I'm not excessively bleeding from anywhere, and I will cast a third level cure wounds on temple. Three right. D8 plus one. Yes, it is. Go right ahead and do so. Uh, Temple, that is 13 HP that you restore. Thank you. Um, I might not die. Uh, oh, oh no, I've changed my HP to 13 instead of adding. <laughs> I think it was 24. No, not 324. I also cast a third level cure wounds on Temple. You will also go ahead and cast a third level cure wounds. Go right ahead. So your cure wounds, I believe, is a 3d8 plus something. If roll 20 wants to uh, actually work. A 3d8 plus 2 for yourself. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who needs healing. Um, Coralina, are you okay? I, I need rest. Um, well, just in case anything jumps out on us, let's take this opportunity for me to lay my hands upon you. Okay. Um, do you consent? Um, <laughs> considering it's simple, yes, I will. I will extend the uh, consent implicit. Eighteen HP. Eighteen HP. Yeah. Coralina. Yay! Hey, I cast a third level kill wounds on Vic. How much do I get? Another 3d8 plus 2 then. Fine. Right. Well, that's why I'm confused. I don't have uh, dice rolls up. Uh... I go 29. The fourth level kill wounds on Coralina. Okay, that's 48 plus 2. Oh, 
Oh, you, ah. all these spell slots, you know. Period. <laughs> oh yeah, four. Oh yeah, period. So no, don't roll that. Actually, David. Uh, thirty-two, thirty-four HP back, Carolina. Parry up to wound closure. I feel actually, loads better. It's, a, it's actually a really powerful magical item, considering. Especially when you're squishy. Especially. How much did that heal from Nith Tari? Uh, you regenerated 15 from Nith Tari. Victorious, you regenerated 20 uh, from Nith Tari. And it was a 34 from to Coralina. What an engaging start to a session. <laughs> Is the periapt of wound closure? <laughs> the periapt of wound closure when you're sealing healing. Uh... Oh, it's actually changed. Is it changed? Apparently, because the last the last time we used the periapt of wound closure, it was uh, you max out at the uh, result of any dice rolled, but it's been nerfed when receiving healing. Double the result of any dice rolled modifier included and heal that much instead. <laughs> It got, it got the nerf. Okay. It got, it got yeah. hit with a nerf stick. So that'll be four d eight plus two, please. So it's, it would just double that. So it's thirty four regardless. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yay! Uh, so you don't gain or lose any health. So lucky for you. That's fine. I'm happy. But yes. Anyway, as as you guys are going through okay. your uh, your process of healing each other up after this grueling battle with the uh, ancient white dragon. I would like you. Uh, actually, hold on. Da, 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 da. Yeah, no, you'll you all notice passively that the um, uh, the harsh, like harsh cold wind that has been steadily flowing through this entire chamber, and like the uh, soft snowflakes that have been falling from the fissures in the ceiling. It's all actually. Not abruptly, but it's come to a very gradual stop. The temperature in this chamber is now actually climbing quite steadily. It's getting to st it's still really cold, but it's not like a deadly cold. Mm -hmm. Um, may I ritual cast the tiny hut? You may go ahead and ca ritual cast tiny hut if you'd like. Excellent. I'll sit and do that for 10 minutes. All right. So in the 10 minutes, while Coralina is ritual casting Tiny Hut, is there anything you guys want to do, the other three of you, Victorless and Neftari in Temple? I, I imagine, Neftari, you must be excited. I, I I hear dragons always keep a horn, and I can see shiny stuff from here. Yeah, absolutely. The uh, shame is the... to go to waste. I'm going to start nosing around and see if I can identify the horde. Not just a horde. I take out my and I walk over to the dead dragon and I try to cut into a thigh. Okay, go ahead and roll me a survival check. <sighs> You're going to eat the dragon, aren't you? Damn it. Unnatural 20. Yeah, you managed to, like, uh, Let's see here. Um, yeah, with one of your scimitars, you're able to uh, deftly like, maneuver the blade underneath the uh, the thick scales that protect its like its musculature, and you manage to pierce through into the underlying skin and carve out a large chunk of dragon, the white dragon thigh. The meat itself is extremely cold. Victoralis, I'm just gonna try. I mean, a... yeah, I mean, get ready with your cue, uh, Victoralis. I'm just gonna try a little bit. I think it needs cooking. You're gonna try and eat it. I'm gonna try. Go ahead and roll me a con save at disadvantage, please. At least he's going to cook it. Eventually. Still an unnatural nineteen. Yeah, it's. It's really cold. It's kind of sickly sweet in your mouth. But like after you swallow it, you do get that kind of almost that sensation of the bile of your stomach just kind of flowing up your throat, ready for you to just throw up and get out of your system. But you manage to swallow it down with a deep breath, managing to take a small chunk of this white dragon 
by and keeping it keep it down. Mm, it's like chicken. Would it try some? Um, n- no, no, you. Well, let's see how well you cook it. If you're going to cook on, it, Vic. treat yourself. No, honestly, I've, I've, I've that fight with that thing's. Um, you know, well, don't know anything for my appetite. Yeah, he was going to eat us. Now we're eating him. Have it. How how old do you think this thing is, Neftari? I don't know. Do you count the number of rings on its tail or something? Uh, how many rings does it have on its tail, DM? <laughs> um, <laughs> too many for you to count. If you were to start counting the rings of scales on its tail, it, you would probably go into the thousands. Well, i got a long life ahead of me. I'm going to start counting. All right, cool. Yeah, Temple, like, uh, off of Neftari's like, mention of rings on tail, you go to the tip of the tail and start counting. One, two, three, four. Uh, Victorious and Neftari, what are you guys doing? Uh, you can trip, create bonfire, and I shall put some dragon flesh on a scimitar and, and try roasting it over there. All right, cool. Go ahead and roll me a survival check. And see how well you cook this dragon meat. Fourteen. Um. Yeah. No. It's. Uh, I mean, you managed to cook it if, if to your liking. So have you? Natari likes his meat like uh, rare, medium rare, whatever. You managed to cook it to your liking, and uh, upon ingesting it, it. Does, uh, it still has that very sweet taste to it, almost kind of like uh, the sweetness that venison has to it um, when eating a venison steak. Um, but it's not overly sickly as it was when it was raw. Um, you are able to keep this down with the relative ease. Hey, mate, you should try this. Um, I think do a bit of wine. Nice red. A nice red wine. I wonder where we could possibly get one of those. Mm, I, I haven't it. had red wine. Damn. Ha. Ha. <clears throat> Your go-to barmaid doesn't have the taste of red wine, so she can't conjure it. The Vic proceeds to like keep reaching into his quiver and like thinking really hard about a bottle of red wine, but obviously there isn't one in there, so it nope. won't come out. <laughs> oh, well. So hard drinks or ale, I guess. But yeah, I'll give it a try, Neftari. I'm gonna take a hard take drinks, one of my short swords, and cut a. Cut a Wait, he said hard drink. drinks. It's the hard white stone. Are, is it just ale or hard drinks? I can only conjure one at a time. Yeah, so that's why I'm asking: is it ale or hard drinks? Hard, hard, hard drink. drinks. A white hard stone, drink. right? Hell cool. yeah. Yep. All right, and Victorious, yeah, you managed to with your uh, short swords carve off a a, a sizable uh, steak of this uh, white dragon thigh that's been uh, cooked efficiently, and again, a very sweet tasting meat that mixed with the uh, the white stone that your white stone uh, drink concoction that you're about to drink. Um, are you going to? Just nurse this drink while you're having your steak, or how are you having it? Um, yeah, I, um, I'll use it just in case um, the dragon steak needs a bit of washing down. Okay. Disinfecting. All right, but you guys just having your like, having your meal and having something to drink before having a long rest within the tiny hut. Or are you guys want to do anything else before we call the end to the evening in the lair? I'm going to pay just... close attention to Vic and see if there's any reaction from him eating the dragon. None at all? Uh, no. I'm not even, I don't even know I need to roll for this. No reaction from Vic eating dragon meat. Dragon meat? Meat at all. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, just wondering. 
Okay. Um, yeah, I just want to check out what's in between these rocks and what he was sitting on, and All there's right. a board there with the size of it. As you climb up onto the rocks and look down in amongst the cracks, you can see glints of gold and a shimmering light silver color, hints of blue and blues and reds, yellows. If anyone wants to write this down, in total, you have 45,000 gold pieces. Adam's writing it down, cool. Yep. 29,000 platinum pieces. You have three blue sapphires worth approximately 1,000 gold each. One opal worth about 1,000 gold. You have a star ruby worth 1,000 gold. One star sapphire worth 1,000 gold. One yellow sapphire worth a thousand gold. You have an unknown spell scroll. And lastly, you have four vials of a crimson red potion. And a puppy! And you get a car, and you get a car, and you get a car. No, no, absolutely not. But that is your, after you kind of go through, like, glancing through all the, uh, the frozen rocks and the hoard of materials, everything else that is there is really mundane in collection, very primal, like logs, sticks, like wooden fortifications and stuff like that. But of the, of the, anything that's of material worth, um, like to yourselves, uh, that is basically all of it there. Uh, uh, hearing Neftari's joy, um, can I take a, a nice stick and just kind of casually throw it in his general direction to see what he does? Yeah, sure, go for it. What are you doing, Neftari? <laughs> as, as a large <laughs> stick just comes flying through there towards you. I attempt to grab it out of, out of the yeah, go ahead and roll me a dex check. Now, the main question is, are you using your hands or your mouth for this? I've not been a wolf so recently, so I think the edge will be just to grab it with his hand. Was it? It? Yeah, cool. With a 10, yeah, you're able to grab the stick out of the air, and it's, it's quite a sizable stick. Does it look at all... Magic. Uh, go ahead and roll me an Arcana check. No, it doesn't look magical in the slightest. It looks like a stick. <laughs> Navtari, maybe there's more value in, in perhaps I I hate to see it. Um. But usual habits given, is there nothing of value on the corpse of this ancient dragon? Surely its claws or teeth or blood even has some alchemic value? Even the scales, I believe, are worth something. They certainly could be fashioned into armor. Oh! I'd be glad to help you, but I, I don't know the first thing about carving up creatures. Well, start at the nose. All right. Go ahead. So, what are you trying to harvest? Um, scales, teeth, claws, and blood. Yep. All right. Cool. Go ahead and roll me four survival checks. Um, I'm helping as much as I can, but I'm letting him lead on how to do it. Okay. That well, if it's, well, since you said you don't really know what you're doing, uh, helping in this regard this isn't be... something I would have. I wouldn't have done this before, so I'm just here to help. Cut. I yeah. Suppose. Like it's still going to be flat survival checks. I mean, um, I've done this hundreds of times. Yes, yes, yes. 
Um, so I'll use a topaz blade, I think, to do this. Okay. Some of them are quite low. Okay, so scales on the 25. Uh, you are able to get, um, like, I actually managed to salvage quite a lot of scales considering the damage that the dragon has taken uh, during your bout of combat with it. Um, you managed to salvage a total of uh, 25 ancient white dragon scales. You don't know how much they're going to, uh, how, how valuable they're going to be. It depends on where you try and sell them from. On a 14, um, for the most part, the talons on uh, each of its um, uh, limbs have all been uh, quite badly damaged in the, uh, the fight. You're actually able to salvage two of them. So two ancient white dragon talons. Teeth. Unfortunately, on the uh, as the dragon took its final breath and kind of collapsed in with its maw open, most of its teeth actually shattered upon impact with the floor. You're not able to salvage any teeth. And blood on a 10 uh, will say your man able to salvage uh, as it has bled out in the time that you guys have been carving up and, and ritual casting about. the tiny heart and gathering all of the, uh, the rewards from the horde. You're able to get two liters worth of ancient white dragon blood. The rest of it is my bled out and spilled over the uh the floor and it's unsalvageable great stick it in this old pepsi bottle <laughs> a white lightning bottle <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep. no they only come in three liters right ultimately okay <laughs> all right we'll see it's about this time that Coralina, you have managed to successfully ritual cast the tiny hut so you do have your uh uh, your little sphere of uh, protection um, around your friends. It's, what, 20 foot diameter, I think it is, tiny hut? It's a 10 foot, so. 10 foot, uh, yeah, 20 foot diameter, 10 foot radius. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you've got a tiny little hut which will last for eight hours, which you guys can use to rest and actually, you know, heal from the... Uh, Mm -hmm. Terrible ordeal of dealing with the uh, ancient white dragon. Can I um, attempt to Arcane retrieve recovery. some of the scales from this dragon? Before um, I check the hut out. So you want to try and gather and get more scales from the dragon as well? Oh, did Neftari already take scales? Yes, he did the four survival checks for scales, teeth, talon, oh, right, talons, cool. and blood. So no, if he's already got some, then that's cool. Yeah, he's already taken it. And uh, Kara, yes, you can go ahead and uh, rest as part of your arcane recovery to get uh, up to a sixth level spell slot back. Can I inspect the bones of these giants? Um, the giants that aren't actually giants, because I just uh, misscaled everything <laughs> within the fight. Um, I don't admit yeah. to that. Say the giants. <laughs> they're not giants. No, they're. I just misscaled everything because I'm very. Uh, I was very stupid with the uh, my placement. Because the shitty thing is, those skeletons are actually at one to one scale on my uh, map making uh, software. So one five foot square. This one skeleton takes take that is. That's what let's do that. It's fifteen odd foot, just a bit. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's fifteen. It's fifteen. Uh, no, it's twenty by uh, twenty by fifteen. So that's that's quite a lot. That's a really tall. Like that's a huge, the equivalent of a huge monster. Like the ancient white dragon is gargantuan. It's four by four. A huge monster is three by three, and that is a, that is the equivalent of. That. That, is, that that little square there that is a uh the equivalent of a, a huge monster and that's how much that fucking skeleton's taken 
I, I think I'm going to inspect. Any swords or anything? Um, Say that you know, again, Temple. Any swords or anything on 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 these these corpses with these warriors that fought to the death? Unfortunately, not. Left there, behind them you... plus ten swords. No. Uh, no, no plus ten swords. That would actually Where break the laws of physics. I'm afraid, or the um, uh, actually fine. be um, condemned to the end of existence. Um, I, I guess. I guess this stream just isn't that anime yet. Not yet. We're not going to get anime. You're not going to become godlike or anything like that. I was flying today, but we went anime. <laughs> that was your wizard casting fly on you. That's not anime. That's your wizard casting a spell on you. You tell me a cow flies past you at 60 feet a second and just flashes his eyes at you and comes in for an attack, but that's not anime. <laughs> it's really not. I haven't seen an anime that consists of a flying cow moving at 60 feet a second. Roll it. Give, it two more seasons. Give it two more seasons. JoJo's will do it. Jesus Christ. Not this again. <laughs> anyway, is there anything else anyone wants to do before we end the night of uh, you guys pillaging the a horde of this ancient white dragon. I'm going to see what species. Was... Sorry, say that again, David. You were cutting out quite a bit there. I thought I was talking over someone. I was. You know, it sounded like someone you were talking. No, not just you. It was you. Oh. Um, can we tell what species some of these skeletons are that are littered around? Um, some, most of them seem to be, well, they're all humanoid in nature. Um, some are quite smaller than others, so you could determine them to be either halfling or, like, uh, dwarvish in nature. Uh, there's a couple of draconic looking, uh, skeletons with the digitigrade, uh, legs and the quite obviously looking, quite obvious looking draconic skull, uh, structure. Um, but for the most part, they're all, like human or elven in nature. Nothing scary. No, nothing too scary, no. So, uh, uh, do you think we're actually on the prime material? You know, I was just about to ask that exact same thing. Uh, is there anything around me at the end that would suggest I'm not necessarily in the prime material or is it too enclosed of a cave for me to be able to tell? Uh, glancing up the uh, small fissures that are allowing some light to trickle in, there's not enough detailing for you to determine exactly where you are at this present moment in time. I All mean, give me time to rest. Cave structure. I mean, give me time to rest and I can try to plane shift again now that nothing's going to really interrupt me. You don't want to look around before we play and shift. I mean, you can only do that so many times, right? I mean, give me give me a chance to rest for the night, and I can do it first thing in the morning. I mean, this thing is going to stay up for eight hours, and nothing can get in that I don't want to get in. Oh, okay. So I don't need to stand outside guarding? No, that'd be rude. You need to sit inside. Okay, I'll stand inside guarding. Okay. So what should happen if the cave would collapse while we're sleeping inside the hut? Why would it do that? What do you see? Well, that, yeah, that is, that's oddly specific, um, but Well, it's, it's, been, it's frozen at the moment, um, the big freezing monster has died and it, everything needs to be falling, and I just If we're in a big block of ice and everything melts, it could all cool up. All right, I could always virtual cast this again if we want to get above ground. I mean, I can easily fix that. I mean, I, I'm just curious, what would happen if we're all in the hut and all this lot comes down? We'd be okay, wouldn't we? Uh, I hope can I... that something that's frozen that's been here this long would hold together a little longer than eight hours. Yeah. yeah, hopefully. I mean, we can go above ground and I can ritual cast this thing again, so... 
it's not a problem. We just got to go up. Or out somewhere? Either or. I just thought up was going to be the quickest way because it's right there. Just being hypothetical, what would happen if something, you know, big and heavy landed on the hook while we're all inside? I mean, it's a different yeah, dimension. Yeah. This is. This is um, uh, out, out of game, um, as per Tiny Hut's description, um, all other creatures and objects are barred from passing through it, which means that if the cave were to suddenly cave in on top of you all, you would all be fine within the tiny hut because the tiny hut itself would expel the external object of the rocks and stalagmites and shit like that from dropping on top of you all. Yep. Sounds pretty safe to me. Well, Considering where we it's are, it's also warm in here. It's kind of nice. Okay, so out there. I'm gonna get in a tiny hut. Okay. And I'm gonna try and start. I'm gonna start trying to wildly summon rooms, like as if we're in a Mordecai mansion. That's, yeah, it's, it's not that kind of spa. <laughs> walk in and it's not kind that, of gesture it's not for that spa kind of to make. To create fighting room kitchen uh, yeah as you, you as you attempt to summon multiple different rooms as you did in the morden canaan's magnificent mansion uh, very disappointed when it just doesn't happen it's just a very bland 10 foot uh, 10 foot radius dome of but force under- which is kind of comfortable to be in but it's still just a dome of force it's nothing spectacular Uh, trying to comprehend if this is a joke. Coralina, your mansion isn't working. It's not a mansion, it's just a tiny hut. This is just... You for if I, I, it, didn't you? Yes, but... It caught... it. I had to output less kinds of arcane force to manipulate the weave to do this. Versus spending a 7th level spell slot to summon the mansion. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not used to resting spells. I I normally just rest wherever I'm stood, out in the rain or in a mossy marsh. I mean, that's great and all that, but it must be terrible on your joints. I just stay there for months at a time. No, they they seem fine. Okay. Well, uh, Well, this is good for people that need to sleep, and it's not as cold out there. Versus and there's engineer. definitely no magical threats that can cause any problems from within the no, tent. No, nothing can get in that I don't want to get in. What if someone that's already in is a threat? <laughs> Something you want to tell us, Temple? Be suspicious of someone? Nope, just constantly thinking about potential threats. I must that's protect That's called hypervigilance. <laughs> The hut will be fine. We we don't need a mansion with a basement full of, with a bar and strippers and the hut's fine. <laughs> no, sorry. It sounds to me very much like the hut is not fine. <laughs> Do you need tucking in? I'm okay, thank you. Oh, you too. Oh, I'm gonna tuck everyone in, DM. <laughs> well, that, that, the question begs first: Is everyone actually going to go into the tiny hut and try and get a long rest? Yeah, well, well, yeah. I'm going to be getting into a meditative state. Yeah, so cool. Let's see how that works. Out. Try, try and tuck you in. in. <laughs> be quite interesting. Just put a little blanket on. Just him. Like, get off me! Just get... All right. So you take your meditative state for four hours, Natari. Yeah, long way. All right, Temple. Uh, took everyone in first. After talking everyone in, are you going to take yep. your sentries rest? Using yeah. the full and... power of my belt of fire giant strength. Yep, yeah, absolutely. And... Plus seven. Too tight! Too tight! <laughs> and currently, are you taking your long rest as well, yeah? I'm attempting. All right, cool. 
Um, but yeah, no, uh, you're with the aid of the tiny hut. The uh, the second ancient white dragon that just showed up is definitely not able to get in and uh, attack you all while you're sleeping. That's most definitely there and is definitely going to try and kill you as well. Um, the night passes by with no other issue. You guys managed to uh, um, complete your long rest, so go ahead and roll your long rest on uh, uh, D&D Beyond while I check this out. Woo! I'm going to read some book. All right, so we'll get started with uh, Vic once again because you know you only need your four hours of meditation. Um, what do you want to do when you first come to conscious? Well, first come out of your meditative state because you don't exactly go unconscious. I'll um, gather up my nice wintry cape mm -hmm. and hood around me, make sure I'm, I'm nice and warm, and I'm gonna head out and. Basically, just do a quick scout around the cave and see if there's anything turned up while we've been resting. All right. See if I can um, see any way out of here other than straight up as well. But as you kind of wake up, uh, well, come uh, come out of your meditative state and get yourself ready. Um, you actually originally notice that um, Coralina is actually sat upright awake before you have been throughout the night. Was she alert, awake? Yeah, she's she's awake. Um I was just gonna go and uh just do a quick scout out there. See if I can find us an escape route, but not sleeping? Um, I've tried. What's the problem? Um, I just look over at the Sentry State of Temple. Can we talk elsewhere? Yeah, like I said, I was gonna head out and okay. do a quick scout around, so... Uh... I won't be any good, but I'll come with you. Okay. All right. Do you guys no, need me to follow, or shall I protect Neftari? Nope. Everything's fine. <laughs> yeah. Best. Best to keep an eye on Neftari, just just in case. You know, the dragon flesh and things. And like. I am entirely convinced. <laughs> All right. So, um, uh, Victorious and Corlina, the moment you guys step out of the tiny hut, I would like you to both go ahead and roll me a. Arcana check as you take a look around. Because as you do glance around, nice, Victorious. <laughs> very nice, Corlea. One and a three. Very nice. Um, as One you guys, one. as you guys glance around, you can see that all. Sir, of that's the... a thirteen. Yes, I know, but it was a natural three. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry. Yes, exactly. You shush. Anyway. <laughs> As you guys look around, you can see that the ice that had formed over all of the rocks and the large, like, planes of ice that had formed across the floor has all began to rapidly melt. It's now, like, the temperature outside is it's actually, oh, like, as, as comfortable as it was inside the tiny hut. There is now, like almost flowing, small flowing streams of water like that are running along the floor and down different cracks into the, into the tunnel in and out like out towards the uh, the entrance that you first came in from the south um Carolina, on a thir on the 13 you have read somewhere that when an ancient white dragon or well, an ancient dragon makes its lair it typically almost terraforms the environment around to suit its draconic heritage. So in this case, ancient white would terraform the area to be cold in nature. So 
it's quite it's free it's freezing ice formations lots of snow and sleet and after mm. a dragon after that dragon dies it tends to nature tiny tends to kind of revert back to way the way things were before so all the ice that is holding this place together is very rapidly melting okay should i be alarmed Yes. We'll, we'll probably get, get going because, um, you know, everything's going to return to where it was. So uh, plane shift is going to probably be, uh, be a good idea. Yeah, it looks like I was wrong about the ice. Um, are you going to be able to plane shift? without any rest i mean i have a little bit of rest so i don't know for sure um dm um i will allow you to have your full rest but you've got one point of exhaustion noted i mean i'll probably be able to if i can like you know because we need to get out of here so um yeah i can do it um Will that work in the in the hut? I believe so, but I'll you know I can always dismiss the hut, and you know it only it's instantaneous. So dismiss the hut, pl- link up, plane shift, and we're back at your Silver Drake Keep. Oh, well, I suppose we don't need to wake up Neftari for that, really, do we? Mm, not necessarily, no. But um, speaking of which. Um, you know that talk we had all back on the Oren plane with uh, with Temple and having to explain things. You'll uh, that happens so often. You'll have to remind me of what particular bit of explanation that was. Um, about how if parts match up, um, pregnancy is viable. Yeah. Um. If I'm good at math, um, all right, this is going to be really TMI, and I'm really sorry for it, um, but I don't know if Elven physiology is the same as Genasi physiology. Uh, So typically, a cycle is like 28 days. Um, The most... She darkens a little bit. The most fertile is in the first 14 days. Uh, I'm on day four, if my math is correct. I'm sorry, is this some sort of magic cycle that Janasi go through? No, a menstrual cycle. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that look on your face, <laughs> don't worry, you're just like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, Vic just sort of uh, starts sort of scuffing the ground awkwardly with the end of his bow, kind of uh, okay. I say I don't know because you know those things take time. Um, but uh, yeah, um, that's a possibility. I don't know, and I'm terrified. When, I can't believe I'm asking this, when did you and Neftari? Yesterday morning. How does that, I'm sorry, I'm no expert here, but how does that equate to four days? Oh, no, 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 no. It's from my last um woman thing. The first two weeks after that are prime, like. I'm I'm really no expert on this. Uh, I was DM, can I hear you should talk to someone else? Within the ten, <laughs> yeah, yes, within, the, within the time you, within the tiny hut, no, you can't hear anything that's going on outside of it.
Uh, yeah, I would, would say I'm not the best person to speak to about this, but I'm going to dance back over to the hut with them two in it and go. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> best one right now, because you're not one. You're not going to immediately blurt it out. Uh, and two, I don't have to worry about you running into a turning into a squirrel and running away. That's a fair point, I suppose. Well, he seemed less than enthused about the prospect. I'm sure. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I can't even say that. I'm not sure. He... Yeah. Hopefully, make a good father. Uh, I, 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 look, I don't even know what we are. We just, we would just go off together. That's about it. So, what would, what would it be? I mean, uh, typically, when other humanoids would breed with Genasi, it usually makes Genasi because if the females are Genasi, then. That's what it makes, but anomalies do happen. And I'm not sure about beast hides, so if that you know that that's what he is, I don't know. That 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 usually isn't covered in genealogy. And how long? I mean is your standard biology like that of humans? Uh yeah, it's comparable, yeah. We've got a bit of time then. Yeah, well, if my math is correct, um, I should know in the next, you know, twenty-four days. So, uh, rounding up, um, four weeks maybe. Well, let's just hope we're not all dead by then. Yeah, you won't say anything, right? Of course. Okay, thank you. Because, I mean, that'd be terrible if it's like, you know, cat's out of the bag and then uh, he goes, you know, off. David, if you need to down your drink, we'll give you a minute. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Speak to Natari at some point, though. Probably. I'm just not looking forward to that conversation. Well, that's the case with most of the conversations you have with Natari, but... <laughs> no, that's most of them have been decent. Oh, most of them have been decent, actually. Yeah, when they're not involving eyeballs or flesh <laughs> or... Yeah, no, okay. Yeah, maybe a little harsh. Um... Well, uh, anyway. Right, um, so, the uh, Silver Drake? Yeah. Yeah, I guess okay. so. Alright. Um, thanks for talking. I, I feel a little bit better. Still terrified, but I feel a little bit better. Good. I'm glad I could help. As yep. you... Oh, I'm assuming Victorious just awkwardly <laughs> walks yeah, back like, to the tiny heart, right. like, oh, fuck. What have I got? What am I getting into now? This is another mess for me to clean up. <sighs> These Can I see ones. Victor Alice yet? Um, as they pass <laughs> into the tiny hut, yes, you can see him. That was a short scouting session. For you, Victor Alice, normally you've got much further. Is everything okay out there? Um, well, case melting quite quickly. Oh. Like, a lot more quickly than expected. Like, thousand degree rock magma melting? Like, I didn't know rock could melt that much. That's well, the cave itself no isn't melting, but the oh. large build up of ice within it is, is certainly melting. Oh, right. Oh, right. When this little hut gets swept away? Um, Can well, your hut swim? No. Uh, well, it's going to just stay rooted in this spot. 
Uh, however, we probably won't have to worry about that problem because I'm going to plane shift us. Is that a good idea? We've had quite a very, I think, approximately 100% of our plane shifts, just doing basic math here, have worked out terribly. Okay, one, I panicked. Two, that was a gate, not a plane shift. Um, well, okay, the time before that, I was interrupted, so we had to use the gate. And gates are random, unless you can uh, completely manipulate, which um, I unfortunately cannot do. I just have very bad luck with teleports lately. Well, um, then let's end your confirmation bias, then. Let's, let's do that. Okay. Where are we going? Um, well, you guys said you wanted to go to Silver Drake, and you gave me the code for that, and we can go there. Well, we 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 can go there. It was my understanding we could only teleport to a, a location from within the continent. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. With, a, with plane shift, as long as you have the uh, teleportation rune code to it, I can get there. Oh, okay. Think, think of the teleportation I, I... circle, but on a much larger scale. Are you aware that that castle has been basically under siege since we left that continent? Um, and while it did have several dragons and many able-bodied individuals guarding it, if they fell, we'll be jumping out of the frying pans, fire into um, a very, very terrible situation. We're talking... Balguras on every side of us and beholders on the rooftops swinging around like apes. <laughs> Not that I'd imagine a beholder to do that, but I really cannot underestimate how much of a terrible position we will be in if we go there now and that keep has not been held. I, that's not exact entirely true, though, Temple. The last time like you, when you previously left, it was a possibility, but the temple, the Silver Drake Keep itself wasn't actually under direct siege. Not under that. direct siege, but given that there were demons around the entire continent, and given the yes, amount of time but... since we left the continent, I think yeah. it's well, fair to make this uh, warning. It's, yeah, but, but that was a warning, but you said that it was under siege. That's not necessarily under true. Siege. Well, the you sent allies. Under siege. There we go. There you go. The well, continent sent... is under siege. Well, you sent allies there, and I mean, at least we'll be on the prime material, and I can always um, flip through my spell book, get teleportation circle, and you know, take us elsewhere uh, within we, the plane. We know we keep well, just as long as we have an exit strategy, even if it's not by a spell. If we can get to one of the keeps, two teleportation circles, one out the front, one in the center, as long as we can get to one of them to get out to a different part of the continent, we just need an exit strategy, that's... Well, I mean, I think you just came up with your own exit strategy. Of course I did, but other people's ideas, second opinions, um... Like I said, I can do it, I can do a teleportation circle, no problem, um, and, but, I mean, you've, you've come up with a, with a main exit strategy and a contingency, so... I think you're kind of set. All right. If we get to Silver Drake and it's fallen, then I hope it's pretty much lost it. anyway. I wouldn't say All so. Right. There's always no a pressure. No pressure then. Okay. No pressure. All right. So, is that the plan for you guys to go and? Uh... Yeah, let's not wake Natari up. Let's just yeah, you're not woken Natari up. You're not woken Natari up yet, but are you guys getting ready to just like essentially kidnap him and plane shift to um, Silver Drake Keep? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Cool. Um, as you guys uh, all link up and like, hand in hand, Coralina, you. Expand your seventh level spell slot to cast plane shift. Um, hmm, how are we gonna do this? Do I be an arsehole? 
No, I won't be an He's awesome. looking at two different templates for the keep. One of them is just on fire. Uh, uh, no. And one of them was on fire. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I'm just not going to be an arsehole. Where the hell was it? It's not on the uh, map anymore. That's unfortunate. Um, did it have a little map for you guys to... Uh, well, a little token that symbolized like where you guys were on the uh, well, Charlie's not going to be happy. There it is. <laughs> I do still have it. Oh, there you are. So you guys are now here. Aha. Uh -huh. On the uh, the as you guys uh, take take each uh, take each other hand in hand, and Coralina, you cast your spell in uh, your plane shift. The world kind of envelops around you, and you all feel a pressing sensation all over your body, almost like you're being squeezed through a uh, very thin tube. Um, Nephtai, this is enough for uh, this is enough to wake you up as you come to consciousness and you see that um, like it, it seems there's just like a myriad of different lights, shapes, and sounds flying past you as you're you think you're still dreaming for the first few moments as you but as you glance around you see your companions all with you linked hand in hand once again before everything comes to a sudden stop. Um, you as you open your eyes and glance around the uh the main hallway of the silver drake keep is very dark there's only like one or two torches lit in the uh the far corners above the doorways and to listen in in the far distance you can hear what sounds to be like what sounds to be like the sense of a raging battle perhaps there are weapons clashing and people, like humanoid screams and shouts that you can hear along with demonic screaming and shouting. But looking around, Silver Drake seems to be well intact, at least. Well, it's not on fire. The moment you open your mouth, Coralina, the entire hallway illuminates in, like, is basked in a very harsh white light from above you forcing you all to kind of glance away and like cover your eyes as it, it's a sudden increase in contrast of the light and looking around as your vision comes back to you you're surrounded by 20 to 30 different armed individuals range like all of different races and creeds all surrounding you with different weapons Short and long swords, bows, pikes, okay. glaives, all sorts. And they're surrounding each and every one of you. I thought these were your friends. Uh, what the hell? Sort of wake up, sis. I was going to eat dragon testicles this morning. Is Ramon still here? Can you please have Lord Ramon come to us? Or we can come to him. The... There's a, at the moment mention of Ramon's name, a couple of the uh, the individuals just kind of look sideways at each other and start whispering to one another. You don't know we are lords of Silver Drake Keep. Your weapons well, are really lords, not necessary. Lords aren't necessarily true. The title hasn't been properly passed down to you, Temple. Comes a voice from the back as a, a, a couple of individuals kind of step aside and they tall individual with flowing silver hair kind of steps out and you recognize this as a an older but still recognizable human form of Zane. It's good to see that you're all almost all okay. Um an absolute pleasure. So much has changed. It it absolutely has. Um, where are your Dragovian friends, Talar and Darren? Where are they? Well, they're still on Taldore. This this is more of a passing visit uh, than a return for us, I believe. You were in a spot of bother and had to 
come back to the one place that you thought would be safe? Using the term safe loosely, but pretty much. Of course, yeah. as, as safe as it can get. Uh, we're well aware, but that is understandable. We have been, well, to put it bluntly, and, you can, and you want to see and just kind of raise his hands and wave all of the, uh, uh, the individuals around you. They don't seem to be guards. If anything, they just seem to be refugees that have taken up arms uh, against potential intruders. And they all kind of disperse and Zane approaches you all. It is. We've been hoping that you've all been okay. Um, we've not been able to keep contact much since you've... DM, how long has it been since we left? Um, since you left, it's been uh, let me let me actually do quick maths here um it's been about three weeks to a month since you've left in total so we've been hoping that you've all been okay but um, I see we've ma managed to make some new allies as this uh, human individual kind of looks down to you, Coralina. Are their weapons still raised at me? Uh, no, they, they, all the individuals have dispersed. Okay. So it's just the oh. four of you and this human looking individual with the silver hair. Okay. My goodness, you have grown this is wonderful uh this is this is Coralina um a close friend and um a member of our adventuring party Coralina Coralina pleasure my name is Zane oh it's nice to meet you so will you all be staying long or do you have intention of returning to Taldore is there some breakfast on? There should be uh, food ready in the Grand Hall if you're in As dire you need tell, of something to eat time. has not changed. Good <laughs> to see you, Zane. For the most part, none of you have really changed. You humanoids tend to age much slower than we do. I literally don't age. I get dirty. I'm not aware of that. How old would an ancient dragon be? An ancient dragon? Um, well, that's hard to tell for the most part, but if it truly was ancient, it would be several thousand years at the very least. My goodness, uh, you'll have to excuse the abrupt question. Um, we had to plane shift out of a difficult, or, or teleport out of a difficult situation, and mm -hmm. ended up right in the lair of an ancient white dragon, which unfortunately wanted to eat us, and unfortunately he had to um, uh, end its He's life. He's a very grumpy dragon. We have, yeah. we have... My white brethren have been known to be very primal and not the brightest of sparks. Wait, your brethren? Yes, oh, brethren. Currently, no. Zane's uh, yeah, I was just, uh, Zane's a son of Ramon. And that's who? Uh, Ramon is my father, who is an ancient silver dragon. I myself am an adult silver dragon. You're not going to try to kill us, are you? <laughs> he just kind of like looks at you with a tilted head before glancing over to everyone else. No. Coralina has just... not met many dragons. Nope. I can tell. And no. Um, we metallics are more akin to be on the good side of moral codes. That and whites are very, as again, they're very primal. They simply want to eat everything. That seems accurate of what we observed, yes? Well, speaking of your father, Zane, how is he? 
he's doing well. Um, he and Rumiur have been in persistent talks um, from Doberheim and trying to establish a permanent means of transportation from here to Doberheim. As you may have been able to tell, um, we have taken quite a lot of, uh, quite an influx of refugees from the other cities and villages throughout the cry. We simply can't hold them all, whereas Doverheim, being a vast area in itself, has been more than willing to open its gates to the many refugees who are not able to take up arms to defend our land. Perhaps, Zane, we should take to um, a more appropriate, uh, perhaps private place to discuss and maybe catch up on the situation as it stands in both the Cry and Taldori. Of, of course. So perhaps if, we can speak frankly. Yes, of course. If you would all like to follow me. Um, if you, as Nethsari, you are looking to get something to eat, if you'd all like to take the time to get some, get your first meal from the uh, from the kitchens in the hallway, in the Grand Hall, I can then take you up to my father and I's quarters above the Grand Hall, and we can have our discussion there, if you'd like. My father and Ados are currently up there in talks with Remur at the present moment in time. I greatly appreciate that. If you could please inform them of, of our return that will be coming up shortly, and perhaps we can catch each other up and see where we are with the Kenjor situation. Of course, and kind of takes and takes a lead and opens the uh, doorway into the Grand Hall. Um, the last time that you guys had been in here, all of the tables and such had been pushed aside, and they are all pushed aside, making one large open area. Um, there is still a run of tables off onto your left, close to the uh, the kitchen doors, which people have... Uh, there are many refugees that are set up there currently, um, enjoying their uh, their breakfast like as they're either here uh, ready to take up arms to defend the keep and defend the land, or they're preparing to leave for Doverheim. You're not quite sure uh, who is doing what, um, but you are able to sit down and get something to eat. Um, it is just the very basics, like uh, some eggs, bacon, mushrooms, toast and such. Uh, very, ba very basic breakfast to keep you going, but the food is there for you all. If you want to get your breakfast, as Zane then moves over to the uh, the glass cylinder cylindrical spiral staircase that leads up to um, Ramon's and Zane's quarters above the Grand Hall. Just as he's sort of motioning in that direction, I just want to kind of gently sort of grab his arm and just say quietly, "Ados, is he doing well?" He's doing absolutely fine. He is. We don't know much about um, Shadow yeah, Dragons, yeah, but from the time that I got we are spending with him, we can determine that they are developing at almost a fourfold development rate of a normal dragon. He's equivalently ages with me at the moment. He is quite powerful. But I implore you to please get something to eat, build your strength. We will be upstairs waiting for you for when you're ready. Okay, I guess this is going to take some getting used to. I'll just nod and then head over to a, a table and take a seat. Alright, cool. You guys want to do anything else before, like, before you grab your breakfast and make your way up the stairs? Yeah, when you said to for Drake, you weren't kidding. I thought it was more of a metaphorical thing. Yeah, not just a, just a clever name. This is as close to home as we've got, I think. Well, it's nice. Well, it seems like it. Yeah, I wasn't expecting to wake up here. Mm. Oh. Neftari looks around. Has are all the dragons out of here? Um, yeah. At the moment, like Zane has walked away and is uh, like ascending up the 
the glass spiral staircase that leads to Ramon's quarters. Yeah, for breakfast this morning, I, I really was going to eat that thing's testicles. I, I, I heard if you eat an ancient dragon's testicles, you, you become the most, uh, it gives you the most sexual prowess of, of, of any creature in the, the, in the, in the but I we'll get to the anatomy of ancient dragons, Nestari. I didn't even know they had testicles. I didn't actually notice anything when I was uh, harvesting the teeth and things. Well, it's too late now, anyway. Drinking Whitestone whiskey. Okay. Well, like, just snap and drink. As soon as the whole talk about sexual prowess is like, okay, no. can't save at disadvantage. I'm gonna glance across at Coralina as she gulps down that whiskey. Uh, do you... Nope. Never mind. <laughs> as it's just snap, glug, and it's it immediately hits you, Coralina. You're swaying. You're you, the room's starting to spin. It's you're getting okay. ready to just pass out. It's okay. I feel a little bit better now. Okay. I think that's probably a bad idea. I'm going to take the bottle away from Coralina. Yep. <laughs> Are you wanting to contest that, Coralina, by the look on your face? Sure. All right, cool. Both of you go ahead and roll me strength checks. Let's see who I get disadvantage because I'm exhausted. And you do. First level exhaustion. Oh, what's that strength check? Strength check, yep. Yeah. Let's see if you can... <laughs> no. That's just a flat no because that was a <laughs> total, total zero. Like... No. No, no, it's my alcohol. <laughs> As, yeah, Victorious is just, I think that's enough. And you just, you just pull the bottle away from Coralina. Oh, yeah, breakfast yeah. whiskey. <clears throat> yeah, I'll take a good gulp out of it myself and I'll hand it over to Nethari. All right, cool. Call and save at disadvantage. This is Whitestone stuff, remember. This isn't the Dragonborn. Ten. Um, yeah, it's, you're able to handle it just a little bit better, but no, the room's already starting to spin. You've got a bit of a headache. You're feeling a little nauseous as you have to take a seat to prevent yourself from just immediately passing out on the floor right there and then. Are you, are, you taking a, are you taking a seat with it as well? Yep, similar goal to the right, rest. Cool. And can't save at disadvantage. Go for it. Ten, yeah, exact same. Take the gulp. It burns on the way down the room. You've not had anything to eat yet, so it's like there's nothing there to try and kind of process the alcohol, like to burn through it, and it's just immediately feeling nauseous immediately feeling dizzy, like you all have to sit down. You all come to the conclusion that, yes, if you have something to eat, maybe it'll help you. Maybe you won't feel like you're going to spew your guts out, but you, that remains to be seen. Yeah, I'm just going to dig into some food. All right, and Temple, are you yep. doing anything while Shuffling you're actually in. munching? No eye contact being, is given. Just, just being worried about three drunk people <laughs> and exactly three spell slots um, that have lesser restoration. Um, <laughs> rather um, not use them all. <laughs> and what was that, Coralina? No, no eye contact is given while eating. No can eye contact, just stare, poke, numb, feeling like death. Yep. No, not like death, but embarrassment. Oh, I know. Yeah. The three of you, Victorious, Coralina, and Nestari, go ahead and roll me a con save again, please, as you guys chow down Let's... on your breakfast. Right. Nestari, on the 23, uh, you're, you're already feeling quite a bit better, considering like you've had this 
several times in the past. Ish. Um, and you know, getting something, getting some food in you, it's like it helped settle your stomach, uh, quite a bit. Um, Victorious, being older on the six, um, being older, your stomach is still doing backflips. You still feel like you're ready to throw up at any given moment in time, but it's slowly fading away. And Coralina, you're um, with everything that's going through your head, even with a 10. No, you still feel like you're ready to throw up at a given moment's notice. Yep. <laughs> Don't know why we keep drinking that stuff. Because it tastes delicious. Mm -hmm. It's the hardest stuff I got. Yeah, we really must introduce you to a good bottle of red wine. Yeah. Right, so, with your there, breakfast... There have been problems previously stated. There have been problems previously stated, but yes. With your... Um, no, promises previously promises stated. Promises previously stated, that's correct. Um, but yes, with your breakfast consumed and your breakfast alcohol consumed as well um you guys now making your way up to the uh the quarter the ramones quarters tempting probably is anybody going to need de drunkifying before we go up um at first glance coralina probably <laughs> Coralina, we're about to speak to um, two silver dragons, uh, one of them um, quite old, and we have had some issues regarding disrespect with certain members of our group in the past. Uh, in addition, we may very well be about to speak to an ancient gold dragon, among other things, so if you don't mind, may I cast lesser restoration on you and have you not um, be drunk? Uh, sure. Don't mind, right. thank you. I shall I shall do that. <laughs> cool. Uh, but before you like expend your spell slot, Carlina, higher low, please, as you open your mouth. Low. <laughs> as you open your mouth to say, uh yeah, sure, it's just <laughs> as you manage to successfully empty your stomach contents out onto Temple's feet. <laughs> Temple, I am so sorry. You feel a lot better, but yeah, you've just emptied the contents of your stomach all over Temple. Well, more it's more like te Temple, it's more of your, like, your torso down the front of your legs and onto your feet. Mm -hmm. You're just covered in puke. Well, it's not the worst thing I've been covered in. Um, is there like a cup of water around I can splash myself off with? Uh, there is like the um, uh, a communal like bathroom just beside the uh, kitchens that are that is there that you can with running water you could use to uh, clean yourself I, up. I, I will pop by and have a quick wash <laughs> and follow everyone up. <laughs> All right. I'm yeah. so sorry. Bye. Next to that thing where you see someone else puke up, and he's just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, because it is uh, being vomiting is contagious. All right, so five minutes, five minutes go by. Coralina, you're still feeling kind of, uh, but yeah. after you know emptying, I still the got the taste in stomach, my mouth. Yeah, you still got that taste of bile in your mouth. It's very, uh, but it's you, very you're unsettling. feeling you're feeling a lot better than what you were about five minutes ago. Yeah. Before Temple, yeah, but I'm worried to, more now. Yep, you managed to clean yourself up, rejoin the others, and you're all making your way up the uh, spiral stairs um, to Ramon's quarters. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. As you like ascend the spiral staircase, you do notice that like, as you kind of glance out into the grand hall every time you come around and you're able to look mm -hmm. down in that direction. There are a lot of people that, like, a lot of the refugees that were in there having their breakfast seem to be kind of pointing up to you every now and then and, like, well, shooting you strange glancing looks yeah, as dog. you make your way up. Like, looks of confusion or, like, looks of shock as you're making your way up. 
Um, but eventually you make your way past the uh, the roof section. You have a couple more spirals to go and you can reach the very, very large uh, oak wooden doors with the single like, humanoid-sized door in the, uh, uh, built into the frame. It is closed and uh, just passively you can hear multiple voices uh, speaking on the inside of the room. So what do you guys do? Um, As Victor well, Wallace's cats knock things over in the background. Yeah, she's uh, decided to jump into the recycling. <laughs> <laughs> I am trash. I live in the trash. <laughs> and we have another kitter boy in, in like joining us as Gatsby is on uh, yeah. Kayla's lap. But um, no, I'm gonna let Vic take the lead on this one because he apparently talks to these people a lot. So yeah, and I don't people. Okay. Okay. So just outside. Where you guys want to do? Knock on the door. Yeah. Now, as you knock, the uh, voices kind of abruptly stop. You can hear <laughs> the sound of soft footfalls approaching. Should door I? Opens. Like, should, there, should there be anything I'm aware of before all this? Uh, speak respectful, as if to uh, a nobleman, of uh, a king or an emperor. Um, uh, and remember that they're not here to eat you. Okay, I think I can do those two things. As that the uh, the door opens and Zane is there in his human form, he's like you seem to be all uh, somewhat uh, refreshed. Please, man. As uh, <laughs> he kind of crinkles his nose as you walk by Temple. <laughs> I cleaned up. <laughs> yeah, but cleaning up with water doesn't necessarily get rid of the smell of puke. <laughs> you all in uh, Zane kind of uh, kind of rushes ahead of you. It's like before you uh, say anything, um, er, my father and Remure are still in talks at the moment. Um, if you would be so kind as to wait here until they're concluded. There should be no more than a few minutes and we will get you caught up in everything that has happened since Absolutely. you departed. Absolutely. Uh, Coralina, you... for your sake, uh, Remyo is the um, uh, the ancient gold dragon. And um, okay. And as you glance up, Coralina, like, way at the back of the uh, this large hall, there is a very like a gargantuan sized um silver dragon that is at the back that is essentially uh, done on uh, lying on top of what looks to be basically like a very large red velvet pillow essentially um just before its uh head there is what looks to be some sort of like floating mirror of sorts but through that mirror there is the um you would assume it would be the reflection of the silver dragon but it's actually the visage of another dragon. It's uh, hmm. bright gold with its large whiskers flowing down its face. Um, you've not actually seen this kind of magic before, but you can just, uh, like, uh, passively, you can tell that this seems to be some kind of uh, viewing window of some sort. It's been able to uh, scry one location to another, uh, probably another window of this at the gold dragon's uh, home, which is allowing them to the two of them to communicate. As Zane walks away from you, he gets about about 25, 30 feet away from you before he, uh, Coralina, you, this is the first time you'll have ever seen this happen, as Gatsby walks over to the microphone, um, as he kind of, like, just begins to hunch over and you witness as his human, like, his skin just seems to, like, seems to, like, flare and burn off as he, the transformation that he rapidly changes his form as he actually becomes quadrupedal and adult silver dragon and walks over to his father. As you're... Yeah, mildly terrifying! <laughs> as you're all waiting for the uh, conversation between Zane, Ramon, and Rimir to finish, um, 
you can actually glancing around, especially for you, Victorless, there doesn't seem to be any immediate sign of Zane anywhere. About five, ten minutes of waiting for the uh, conversation to end. Um, they're keeping their voices extremely low so that you, you don't really hear much of the conversation. But the uh, remote kind of gently pushes the, um, the viewing window back into its resting place on the wall where the visage of the ancient gold dragon fades. And... Moth just kind of flies back down and gestures you all forward towards him. You all approaching? Yeah. Oh no, but mm. I'm letting Vic take the lead on this one. Mm. All right. I'll be near the back. All right, with everyone <laughs> staying at the far back, um, you all slowly approach, and Moth just kind of looks over to you. Well, it is very good to see you all alive and well. And Zen has explained to me that the Dergovians, Talar and Aaron, from what you have said, Victorless, have been left behind in Taldore. Now, the Dergovians of Dovaheim, they are questioning that troubling news as why they have been left behind. Is there any particular reason as to why that is? So that I can ease the tension between ourselves and the people of Dovaheim? Well, as we explained to Zane, we only come here out of necessity, not as a return as such. We didn't really plan on this visit. And I feel that we Still have a great deal more work to do in Taldore before we can even begin to imagine the sort of support that we would need. I had come to that conclusion myself, but that does, still does not explain as to why the two companions that you left with before are no longer present while you have a... He kind of cranes his neck over all of you and gets a very good line of sight on you, Coralina. A new companion, whom seems to be quite afraid. Forgive the um, tensions of our companion, Coralina, of House Ramiel here. Um, we literally, the, the moment we teleported here, we had just come out of a fight with a ancient white dragon, which was trying to eat us, so... And that was her first time meeting a dragon, so she's unfamiliar with the conduct. And um... yes, Zane did explain that you would come to blows with an ancient white. I can assure you, Zane and I will cause you no harm, unless it is to defend ourselves from you. Don't do anything stupid. We will be fine. Our companion, Aaron, um, was unfortunately injured en route to Taldore. He is currently recovering at a place back in Taldore. Um, and, and for complete transparency, uh, um, Tala, um, she went her own way, uh, I believe. I believe it was partly a religious matter, partly a conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. And what conflict of interest would that be? I need complete transparency from you all if I'm to explain this to the Dovaheims. Absolutely. If, um, yeah. Regarding Tala, um, the disagreement was with difficulty surrounding a situation regarding a werewolf and the ethical situation that comes up with any such werewolf problem in that are they afflicted with a curse? Should they be killed? It was a difficult situation, but Tala said she needed to go her own way. And I believe she did have a quest of her own she needed, but she felt was more important um, mm. regarding the... the um, she had some sort of 
artifact given to a certain person of, of her religion. I, I'm afraid I'm not entirely... Uh, DM, do I know anything about... Um, How much the, do I know about the lore of her religion? Um, you've done quite a lot of research into relig- all of religion, like as many of the religions as you possibly could, but it's bare bones as to why you are doing your research that way for t- trying to determine who your deity was before you discovered the rule. Um, you wouldn't have dove into like in-depth like rumours and like, artifacts, all of each one, so you probably have no idea what it is that she has and what she's trying to do. Uh, it, it goes without saying, it's a complicated situation. Very. Perhaps we'll reunite at some point, but for now, Talar will not be joining us in our uh, adventuring mm. states. Aaron um, is, is, I believe, on a, a quick recovery. And so I'll be meeting back with him very soon. He kind of like leans over to the side, his like his long kind of neck just kind of gets around and gets face like eye level with you, Coralina, close to the ground as he kind of diverts around to the party. And and what exactly is it that you can provide to my friends here? I know um... of House Ramiel. I know of what you have done in the Oran Plain. Tell me that you're not here as a conqueror. No, no, I'm not, not a conqueror. Um, uh, I'm not. I, I'm. I, I'm good take, at a little bit of magic stuff. Take a deep breath, young one, and just tell me honestly. Not a conqueror, or yes. Not a conqueror. Like a concubine. After he looks back and holds a hand. Kind of yeah, smiles of her. Her face is violet now. <laughs> it kind of uh the Ruth just kind of all looks you up and down. I believe you. Before uh That's the first part, the second part. Before our uh, hurried uh, transportation, shall we say, into the lair of the uh, the white dragon, we were at a point where Coralina's family had offered, well, her father specifically had offered support in our cause here. <laughs> of course he would have. He would offer you support in any, in, as a means to get a foothold here. That is what the Ramiels do. They conquer. Isn't that right, young Coralina? Uh, so far, uh, just him and the family line going back centuries, but um, exactly. uh, families can change. Perhaps when your father finally passes and leaves everything to a true heir, then maybe they will change. But for now, while Lord Ramiel is still on the seat of the throne, any offer he p- he passes to you, take with caution. If you were to get a foothold in the prime material, it would be disastrous for us all. Even with everything that's going on now. Speaking of, if you don't mind, um, how are things going down in a cry at the moment? I, we have not had updates. We are so we're not really sure. We are managing. There are undead, demonic, and devilish forces running rampant throughout the countryside. Most of the cities have already fallen. Riverdale, Steam Scar, they've we've lost complete contact. Most of the refugees have already been brought here, but anyone who's stayed behind we have lost contact with. Umberport to the northeast is 
still holding their walls are maintaining to keep the demonic and devilish forces out but we do not know how long that will last we are still in talks with an envoy of the Portians trying to get them here so that we can get them someplace safe after all if their walls fail them they will lose everyone the capital Avondale is flourishing if anything they've managed to repel most of the attacks but I feel that there is something bigger coming that will strike Avondale sooner rather than later. With greatest respect to the deceased, are they still reanimating on death? Most are reanimating almost instantly. I see. Um, it's... That's interesting. Nobody in Taldoria that we've come across has reanimated yet, so this curse or disease seems very localized. Perhaps it is, but it has progressed before when it would take at least a few minutes to progress and to take hold. Now uh, the corpses are barely hit the floor by before they're reanimated and striking back at friend and brother alike. I'm learning Kenja over there. Uh, he's... He's got the staff of the staff of the car. Uh, ah, yeah. yes, that's. Wait, what? Not only is my fairy friend here, right? Not only does Kenjo and his daughter hold the staff of Carsus, but Victoralis. Am I right in saying that there is not only another Kenjo, but a shadow form of yourself? Also, a shadow form, perhaps. Which of us is the shadow form? That's yet to be seen, but there are two of us. There seem to be two of all of them, those at least that lived through this so disaster. I saw that the greatest enemy that we have faced so far, there is now two of them. There is an alternate form of yourself but not only that but they also possess the strongest arcane artifact known to the prime material we had previously sent word i'm surprised it hadn't reached you sent word with whom the the name of the gentleman um that ran the archives slash museum uh, I can't remember his name, and I don't think I have it written down. It was not the guy who turned into a demon the next day. No, that was his apprentice, but out of game, the the, the Red Dragonborn uh, curator of the Rail Hunter Guild, his name was Auric Potter. Um, and yes, you did send him back to Silver Drake. Mm -hmm. and there has been a no word of this individual reaching here. How did they... How did they return? Did they travel through the airship from towards Umberport, or was it teleportation? Because if it was through the airship, then they're probably still in Umberport. As not far allowing... as we were aware. Okay. Is there we don't know in, in or out of the city? He may still be held up there, then, as we don't know that we have any efficient means to teleport people straight here. And as you can imagine, mm -hmm. We are not particularly willing to give the teleportation codes for this very hall to, to anyone but the most trusted. Um, of course. Our, our, our most there... sincere concern is is we do not have any leads on tracking down the staff of car system. I'm not entirely sure why he what he plans on doing with it. He kind of like turns and looks into the one of the the far dark corner. Begin some research. The staff of Carsus. I'm sure you'll be able to find something out. Yeah, the guy was sent back here. That's what he was supposed to help you with. He knows more about it than anybody. He was a museum curator, looking after the thing. 
He said his security was uh, the best you could get, and there was no way they could possibly lose his stuff. And then he went. Zilstein, I think, daughter of Kenjo, unfortunately, is quite a powerful wizard, as it stands. By the looks of it. Uh, perhaps, um, does Umberhort have a teleportation circle? Perhaps it does. Perhaps we could see if we could get our Red Dragonborn friend his his knowledge on artifacts such as the Staff of Castles, among others, could be invaluable. There is no you... teleportation circle to Umberport, unfortunately. They I refuse to live. There was a teleportation circle, but it has sin since been destroyed, I refusing see. to allow people in or out of the city. We are still trying to speak with them to reset their teleportation circle to get their refugees out here so that we can perhaps take them in here or send them to Dolbeheim. But in the meantime, we will have to do our own research. But knowing what has happened previously with the stuff of Karsus, I am concerned to say the least. Kenjo's plan and apparently what it seemed where he was heading with with his his plans. Um could it be that the staff of Karsus is instrumental to those plans? Very much so. The staff of Karsus is the only known artifact that there is that remains on this prime material that has cast spells in a mortal aspect above ninth level. Wait, so there's other, other artifacts on other planes of existence, maybe, that have done such a feat? The only known individuals who have cast such spells who are able to do such things are not mere mortals. Dragons, for one, I myself am able to cast up to 10th level spells. Remure is able to cast 11th. The Staff of Karsus and the Sorcerer Karsus himself, several centuries ago, was able to cast 12th level spells. Only once. It did tear him apart, but it was only one spell. But it was 12th level. Perhaps there is a way to track down the location of the Staff of Castles. It will no doubt be guarded, perhaps, That's... by Kenjo's very side. But if we could get to it or destroy it, maybe... Maybe that would be the biggest step we could take towards stopping the world. I feel that ending. that's maybe a futile in attempt. If Kenjo has the Staff of Karsus, it will be on his person. And Kenjo, as far as we are aware, is in Denfasari. We simply cannot risk an assault in Denfasari, as it may amplify everything that has happened to me cause him to forward his plans. It may end up getting a lot of people killed, and we are not ready for that at the moment. Not with the forces that we have at our disposal. Thieves Guild said they would help us. How oh, much really of you... Trust? How many people have you managed to get onto our side since you've travelled to Taldore? The, the main issue we've been having that has prevented us getting a sizable force is, quite frankly, getting people to believe us. And, and uh, as, as far as most lords and nobles are concerned, we're just adventurers, and our grand quest is no more important than theirs. Unfortunately, due to the lack of resurrecting dead in Taldore, very few people mm. quite understand the threat, except those educated on what the staff of Karsus is, of all things. So it's going to take, potentially take the curse being less localized and starting to kill the people of Taldore for them to believe you. It's, it's morbid, but that's because this is a problem on an entirely different continent. Uh, many people 
seem not to care. People have, have, have expressed that this is a problem in Accry, not a problem over here. The only, I mean, the only potential support that we've even potentially gathered is is based on deception, and that is um, House House Ramiel's leader, which, as you've discussed, is not someone necessarily to be trusted. Mm. Expressed his support under the pretense that Victoralis, a lord of Denfasari, um, may perhaps be getting married to Coralina. But fortunately, that's not the case. They're simply not together. It's it's been. It's been... No, we never told him that. No, no, he never, found, he never found out, and hopefully, he never will. Yes. This, this that was mostly just difficulty. to get my sister off my back. He did, yeah, he did like the idea that a prince was asking him for help, and that was... Yes, it's it's difficult. You see, our, our friend Coralina here is, 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 is the heir, but she's not really into the idea of arranged marriage, and she doesn't want to be mm. part of that, if, if I dare speak for you, Coralina. No, it is quite terrible, actually. It's getting people to believe us. That's our greatest problem at the moment. Or really understand the gravity of the threat. If if people were dying like they were here, uh, to be honest, I don't even know that they'd come here. They'd be fighting in their own lands. It's. So I think there was some genuine concern from the Ramiels. Uh, they've noticed no. strange no. things happening uh, on the yes, other planes so, of existence. Yeah. And we when we really link it to Kenja, they believe it might be part of uh, what Kenjar is. Get a, a peek in their war room, but it, it, they, they were they were concerned about something, and members of the family were very mm. concerned about certain things we'd said. One of them had uh, prophesied or, or seen something, which when we described the castle of Denfasari, this person was very very well aware that that's what it was, that they're the only faction we've managed to probably convince that there's something happening. Well, no, there was, there was some druids as well, but the, the, the druids were nowhere near as powerful as Remy Allen. There was a small group of druids that pledged but support. As long as you are doing whatever you can to get whatever assistance you can, you're doing more than what I could possibly ask of you. We don't plan on stopping what we're doing. I wouldn't expect you to. We are all at the risk here. You're doing an amazing job so far. This is some troubling news, but news at this moment at this present moment in time is good news nonetheless. And I'm simply happy to see that you are all okay. And knowing that both Talar and Eren are at least alive and well, just doing their own thing, that will help me uh, sway the Dovaheims to allow some refugees to take shelter on their island. Teralis, wouldn't you ask about the one you share a bond with? Yeah, I felt that that was <clears throat> the least important point of discussion, but of course, my interests, now we're here, do lie with Ados. Oh. Ados is doing extremely well. He has developed much faster than I had anticipated. Again, this is a a first encounter with a shadow dragon. However, he will be preoccupied for the next few hours, unfortunately, as after all, he will be doing the research. As Remote kind of glances back into the darkened corner and you just see a plume of white, freezing cold air just appear out of nowhere from the darkness. 
Can I panic in mage armor? You most certainly can if you would like to. Okay. As yep, you panic ex in mage armor. expend your spell slot and conjure your mage armor around you as a uh, faint glow of arcane, of an, like an arcane barrier forms all around you. It's just. <laughs> you do not need to worry about him. He is. Well, he is awkward at times as he has grown, but he has proved to be extremely useful. In fact, you and he might become quite close friends. Carolina, you seem to be the most adept in the arcane arts amongst your companions. I mean, no offense to the rest of you, but when it comes to knowledge of the arcane, you would barely be able to fight your way out of a magical paper back. Hey, I got more powerful than you. Uh, you may be powerful, but your your magical prowess is more in, kind, in tune with nature than that of the arcane. Oh. However, Carolina here, I can, I can almost taste the power coming from you. You are quite a powerful wizard, if I'm not mistaken. I think that you and Ados would be able to work together to at least in case in his research. I can definitely try. Uh, research is one of the things I'm good at. Well, I'm glad. It's a, it, it's a short list, but research is near the top. <laughs> a short list is a list nonetheless. However, if you would all be so kind, Victorless, if you would wish to commune with Ados, you are Free to do so, of course, and as you are all, including yourself, Carolina, family, you have free reign of the keep. Speak to whomever you wish, do whatever you wish, you are free to stay here. I'm assuming that your wizard here is the one that will be taking you back to Taldore, and do you require another rest to recharge? Or will you be able to travel out that way today? Well, just one last question for for for, for super wise uh, dragon. Mm -hmm. Demons. Uh, this land is overrun with demons. Um, yes. Not all demons are bad, are they? Most are quite malevolent, yes. Why? But there are some good. I wouldn't say de there are some good demons. There are perhaps neutral demons who are simply trying to further their own gains, but good? No. Has certainly bias from me being a paladin and all, but I've never met a demon with benevolent intent. Um, I mean, I might have signed a contract with a demon. You did what? It seemed okay to me. You willingly signed your name? Your very soul to a demon? My soul? What? No. Uh, it, I bought something of it. Well, hired a couple of. Um, it was a, a Balgora, and seemed to be an inventor of mechanical was creatures. Was it Glabra Zoo? Was it the Glabra Zoo? Are you sure? Was it? Um, yes, we got his name in return, though. Control Doran. Um, mm -hmm. He knows Corrine, Coralina, and Neftari's name. And he seemed to offer creatures known as steel predators. Hmm. We've yet to He's... see uh, either side of the bargain fulfilled. A demon always I mean, keeps we his have words. To be back there. Well, if Neftari summon or attempt to try and contact and use these so-called steel predators. 
Perhaps that's the last we'll hear of it, at least until I go back and deal with the situation at some point. I, I want those creatures. They he invented these um like golems. They they were really, really powerful. Um it, it, they gave all four of us five of us were there then, um a really good fight and they were sort of like me mechanical wolves in a, in a sort of sense, I suppose. Yeah, kind of. Not not dissimilar. Regardless of what this demon has told you, <clears throat> making a deal with it is beyond stupid. You should you know what you are fighting here, and yet you've signed into an agreement with one for these. Steel predators. Yeah. Predators yeah. could help us in the fight. That was the what was helping. Whether it helps or not it remains to be seen. But I would highly suggest that you think about what you're planning on doing before you do it. There is no such thing as a good demon. Well, a neutral demon, then. I mean, my soul isn't necessarily definitely lost or anything, is it? I do not know. You've made a deal with this demon. It could uh, ask anything of you. Deals can be changed. It may be something simple now, but it could become a lot more complex. There are a lot more dangers for you down the line. Be careful. Now, I must consider everything that you have told me and attempt to try and calm down before I end up getting extremely angry for your hasty decisions. I trust you're doing this for the betterment of us all, but... Making deals with demons, my god. Seem nice! He manipulated you to gain your trust. He then made a deal with him. That is all they want to do. Demons, devils, the fae. They will do whatever they can to get an advantage. And if you give them something personal, they will use it against you. Just be careful with what you do with these steel predators, if you choose to use them. Now, if you'll excuse me, Aramir is going to need a update on your progress as you've gone through Taldore. Mm. Abruptly and quite, you can tell that the air has now got a uh, hint of either anger or frustration to it, uh, a moment kind of turns away from you, gestures over the uh, the mirror, which slowly glides over to him. Um, you can see the mirror kind of ripple, and like almost like pebbles hitting water before um, Remur, the ancient gold dragon, appears on the other end of the mirror and they begin conversing quietly. Uh, should, should, we, should we leave? Back to the Hall, perhaps. Um, yeah. And Zane kind of like slowly makes his way over to you and kind of lies down beside you all. I think it would be best if you all make your way outside for now. Yeah. Um, but uh, I can always direct yourselves, Victorless and Corlina, to Zane's own personal abode if you do wish to speak to him, Victorious and Coralina if you want to aid him in his research I can direct them, uh, direct you to him sure, it could give me something to do well of course. while we're here given the bond we share I feel that I should at least speak to him Of course. He will probably be up there now. It is actually in above 
where uh, my father uh, rests. But there is a, a means of access to it. Um, in the Thetari Temple, if you are, of course, free to do whatever you want throughout the keep, but Ritualis, Corlina, if you would both like to join me. And okay. Zane kind of gets up and walks over before dropping back down to his uh, human form. Uh, Victorious, you actually recognize this area that you're going uh, you're going towards. Um, it's back back when uh, Ados hadn't hatched, when his egg would has it was set up in a pedestal. There was actually a door built in, uh, just behind that area, which leads down into a very dark, cold ex- dungeon extension. Um, it opens up um, when you get down the stairs. It leads it opens up into a quite a. Not the same size as uh, Ramon's chambers, but it is a, a sizable room. It's very dark, very cold. There are torches that emit blue light and uh, with blue flames that kind of follow down the hallway and at the uh, the back, kind of uh, exhuming a mist of cold energy is your black-scaled uh, shadow silver, uh, well, silver shadow dragon, um, Ados. Uh, quite large and in his draconic form seems to just be skimming through what looks to be a multitude of different books like all at once there's at least five different books that he seems to be going from one to another like leaning in close and with the gentle flicks of his talons passing the pages and doing some research before he kind of glances up and sees the three of you Zane kind of bows to the the pair of you and now I will leave you here it's Carly and I would suggest that you wait for Victorless to finish speaking hey. with Ados it's uh, justifies. it's personal for the two of them but uh, Victorless it has been some time so I wouldn't say be cautious but take things slow of course Okay, I'll stand over here, Vic. I got, I, I have books to read. Don't worry. I'm going to I'm gonna take my cape and armor off mm-hmm. at this point, so I'm basically so so that my arm is mm-hmm. exposed and he can clearly see the markings. And then I'll very slowly make my way over there. How close are you getting? Well, six feet away. Six feet away. You walk over and you eventually stop and he's he kind of glances to his side and notices you. He turns to the book that he was looking at and flicks the page before turning around to look at you. He just kind of just laying there kind of stares at you almost like he's trying to judge you. Before he slowly kind of leans closer to you and with the uh with the very tip of his snout just kind of presses up against your forehead for a brief moment. Victorless, it is very good to see you again. Feels like it's been a very long time. Long for some, but excruciatingly long for myself. Are you... are you well? Are you safe? I am. With Zane and Ramon's teachings, I have come to understand what I am and how I develop the month of time that has passed since you departed. Feels like several centuries. I didn't want to. Didn't want to leave when I did, and I, I didn't want to leave you behind. But with everything that's been going on, it seemed the best place and the best decision for we. I am aware it would be dangerous for a uneducated shadow dragon to be walking the lands with you, and 
he kind of just looks over himself as he is very like he is a very large uh, dragon at this point. It would be difficult to keep me hidden from the public view as I am. It was a very sound logical decision that you made, and I respect you for the decision made. If the positions were reversed, I would have done the same thing. Sadly, this is only a fleeting visit. There's still a lot more work to be done. Of course. I hear you've become quite proficient in the arcane. I have, with Remur taking over some training every every so often. I have become adapted casting quite a lot of different spells of different schools. I would offer you a show of my arcane prowess, but unfortunately I am forbidden from doing so as the last time I cast any kind of spell. I may or may not have accidentally destroyed a large chunk of the keep, which I then had to rebuild by myself as punishment. Some powerful magic, then. I am uh, only allowed to practice my magic when I am supervised in case something terrible goes wrong. If Remir or Ramon are there and I lose control of the arcane load, they can counterspell. They are much more experienced than I am. They are there to protect not only myself, but everyone else in the keep. Of course. How, how's your research going? What are you looking at? As per Ramon's request, I am looking up this staff of Carsus, but these the last few millennia of history books that I'm looking through don't really have much. The text is quite small and I am quite large. This is difficult for me to read at all, but I am doing the best that I can. Well, we are hoping to track down an expert who was on his way here um, in the meantime. Uh, we have a, a friend who joined us some time ago who shares your skills and passion for the arcane. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look across to Coralina and sort of give her a Nose in a book. Uh, Carolina. Huh? What? What? Come yes. meet Ados. Okay. My mage armor is still on, correct? Yes, it is still on. Thank you. <laughs> you slowly approaching? Slowly approach. mm -hmm. Yes. He, he kind of like leans over and gets like right up close to you, a couple of feet away from you. And just kind of looks you over. Hmm. Let's see, your abilities to win manipulate the weave is as powerful as my own. But you and I both have a bit of learning and development to go yet. No, how quick a study are you? Very quick. Very. Good. Are you willing to assist me in my research on this staff of Carsus? Well, yeah, seeing as we've experienced it, like, well, at least for me, once before. So, have yeah. First hand experience with this artifact. I believe it was your your um sister Vic that summoned a uh, beholder, I believe. Yeah, amongst other things. Yes, amongst other things. And yes, your assistance here would be invaluable. Having first hand experience you will know what what more hints and 
tails to look at with what it can potentially do. Please, and he kind of okay. like he kind of shifts over, and he does have that uh, similar looking kind of uh, large pillow that he's resting on, except it's like a uh, pitch black felt. He kind of shifts over slightly and offers you a large section of it to actually join him on to conduct your research. Uh, okay. Um, so where did you leave off at? Um, these three books, and he kind of like with. Very gentle, very gentle, very precise positioning of his talent slides three of the books over to you. I barely got a few chapters in and a couple of centuries worth of research there, but feel free to peruse through those books and try and find out anything that you can. I will take these two. I apologize if I seem to be putting the majority of the task upon yourself, but it is somewhat difficult to read the very fine print of these texts here. It, it's okay. Um, you're like the fourth dragon I've met, and um, the third one not to eat me immediately, so you're already uh, doing good, hmm. I suppose. Hmm. Uh, I mean, I mean, the first one I met didn't get a chance to eat me, but uh, he was, he got close. Hmm. Well, I can assure that you'll be safe here. Okay. Is there anything else that you would like to talk about, Victorless, before we get into our research? Maybe it's not for the here and now, but I've been struggling to understand a sort of gesture to my arm. This bond that we have. Do you hmm. understand it? Vaguely. Perhaps it would be best if we got a moment just you and I in the future once we have finished our task for a month to sit down and discuss what it is that you and I have. Of course. And you two clearly have a lot of work to do. Right. Well, Carolina, I'll give you an Edos's capable claws. And kind of lifts one of his hands up with very large talons on it. Like, a hand would be more apt, but whatever you say. Speak again soon. <laughs> All right, Victor, that's what you're doing now. You make gonna, your way back out? Or... Yeah. I'll, yeah, sort of slowly back away. I'll gather up my armor and my, my cloak. Okay. Hesitantly. Mm -hmm. And then a final look back. And then I'll head out. As you look back, Ados does kind of glance up to you as well and just gives you a, uh, a very, like... A very respectful nod of understanding that you know he understands that you've you've come back and you want to, to you know spend some time with him to get to know him a bit more and like you know not just abruptly leave but given the task at hand he wants to get this done and he understands your confliction. He gives you that nod and kind of hunches down next to Coralina as they then get stuck into their research. I'm gonna go and find find a spot. Um, mull over sort of what's just happened, and when I get back to studying the book, try and take my mind off it. All right, yeah. Um, this will be another. So you've how many, how many hours have you got left on your manual? Was it like thirty eight? Eight. Yeah, so given the rest of the day, if you're doing like if you not want to do anything else for the rest of this day, you could probably get another I'd say another eight hours in. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna focus on that and wait for them to Alright, cool. Uh Neftari and Temple, what are you guys wanting to do in the uh in the meantime? Shenanigans. <laughs> probably. 
Oh, Temple. Shall we go wind that orc? It was a dwarf, by the way, not an orc. <laughs> dwarf. I'd rather not agitate the denizens of, of the keep, but um, perhaps we could stop by and see if he has anything. As a blacksmith, perhaps he'd like to see this. I don't know, maybe this this frost giant great axe or something. Yeah, I reckon he would. I'll show him my dagger. Sure, absolutely. All right, so you guys making your way back down through the great hall and then down to the dungeons to go and speak to the dwarven smithy of Silver Drake Keep. Uh -huh. Yes, absolutely. I am sure he'll be absolutely. Delighted. It's quick see. question out of the game. Do either of you remember his name? It, I, I, He's looking I, through. I think I've written it down. I'm just going through my thing now. Um, because I've got multiple names written down. Uh, fine people. Uh, Sadok. Yeah. Dwarf. There you go. Um, Good. He wants obsidian. <laughs> That's what I've got written down. Yes, that was a uh, a quest that he'd given you uh quite some time ago, which you actually did manage to bring him back some obsidian. Um, yeah, you make your way down into the dungeon, you take a, a right hand turn, you can hear the uh, the clanging of metal on metal and the uh, orange glow coming from the bottom of the door, the heat being exhumed from it as his uh, forge and the forge seems to be lit and working and he seems to be working on something down in his uh, his workshop. Gonna sneak up behind. Uh, uh, like uh, I'm gonna knock to interrupt Neftari trying to sneak. <laughs> uh, as you're like getting ready to like, you slowly turn the handle of the door to like push or open Neftari, getting ready to sneak in and be a dickhead before Temple just <laughs> knocks on the door and you just the sound of metal on metal stops and there's a shuffling behind the door before it opens abruptly and he kind of looks up to you all. Hi, what do you two want? Oh. Oh, fuck. You two. What are you doing back here? Glad to see you as well. I thought I was what? finally fucking shot of you, but no. Oh. Now you're back to cause even more trouble. Oh, Look, let me tell you, let me tell you one thing. If, I swear to fuck, if either of you go rummaging around and changing everything, rearranging everything in my shop again, behind my back, I will fucking kill you. Do you understand me? Yes. All right. So I am I well aware that it was one of you or your group. I know it was one of you. I don't know who it was, but I'll fucking find out. I, 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 Lena, I, I, last I time say. we were here, we we carefully uh, swapped everything, but neatly, but everything in a different carefully, place. but neatly. I think it was on a natural twenty, just completely rearranged. It's, it's like a reference, a reference to Critical Role Campaign Two, and Jester's in one of the uh, one of the shops. She just rolls a natural twenty and just go over, goes around and completely rearranges the entire shop, and the shop owner's just like, huh? But they basically did that, but in the Smithy's workshop. Well, um, I was hoping, Sadok, while we're here, perhaps you had anything interesting to show me, and perhaps you could appreciate the um, smithery of some weapons we found on our journeys. Aye, 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 of course. Depends on what you've brought. But I'll see what I've got. Uh, I've been working with Jaka. Jaka's been training and has been able to do, get some pretty good work under his belt on his enchantments. Um... I wondered about uh, Jakar. Uh, his, his wasn't his workshop outside the keep. So no, his, his workshop was inside the keep. It was just up up several floors. Jakar ah. was the um, alchemist that dabbled in enchanting that has yes made some of our swords quite powerful. Speaking of quite powerful swords, I've yet to give this to Victoralis. Back to Victoralis, and there's uh, another weapon I found on a frost giant, and I'm gonna lay down on like a table. I'm uh, we're gonna. Sure oh. ourselves into we have ourselves here a frost giant's great axe. It's, um, it's interesting. And this here is a, a dragon, dragon slaying longsword. I am well aware 
It's been a long time since I've seen one of these. Please, by all means. Uh, he's already got it in his hands and is like yeah, looking yeah. at it. <laughs> now, suffice it to say, I'd highly recommend that you do not draw this weapon in front of Zane or Ramont. We certainly will not, although it has tasted blood as little as 24 hours ago when we happened upon the lair of a um, ancient white dragon that very oh, much wanted to eat us. It's got use on it as well. Very nice. I could... I haven't even had time to clean it. That is ancient white dragon blood. He kind of like draws his hands across the flat of the blade and actually taking, like, as he takes his fingers away, it's a bit, you can see the kind of sticky, kind of partially coagulated dragon blood on it in his fingers. He's like, interesting. So you've gotten up to a lot of good things while you've been away, instead of being complete and utter arseholes. Yeah, well, we're not even arseholes even... half the time. You were, uh, Hannah, you especially were an arsehole every time you fucking came in here. You shut the fuck up. I got some trinkets and all. Take a look at this little dagger. You draw the topaz dagger and like kind of spin it in your fingers and pass it over to him. You kind of like very abruptly drops the dragon slaying longsword, which clatters onto the floor, and he almost snatches the topaz dagger out of your hands. It's like Isn't that bunny little thing. It's beautiful. If you remember correctly, I was trying to do some work on obsidian, but I've never seen a a gem crafted into a blade of sorts. Gems are typically very fragile when you cut them down and, you know, turn them into blades. But this is... I wonder. Kind of spins the blade in his hand so it's um, uh, off-handed, the blade down back, and he just kind of slams it down into the uh, um, the wood of his table and the blade actually pierces clean through the, like, half-inch thick oak table down to the hilt. He just kind of... <clears throat> rips and wrenches it out. Like, this is... This is some fine craftsmanship. Where did you, who did you buy this off of? Do, do you know where I could get the experience from? Because I would really like to make something like this myself. I think it's a one of kind. I acquired it through... Um, there was let's the just say... Uh, of the Topaz Dagger, named after this device, which... I th is that the one that burnt down after those cultists attacked? No. Thieves Guild attacked us. Uh, there was a bad criminal organization. Uh -huh. this, this dagger was in the hands of one of their um, lieutenants. Okay. I, okay. And, uh, well, we burned down his home. His wife was killed by some spiders in some tunnels, and I liberated this from a, a very... I have never seen the phrase long story short expressed so abruptly, Neftari. So, if I'm understanding what you've said, you nicked this off of someone. We didn't get it from a shop. Yeah, I didn't exactly. So you nicked it off of someone. Yeah, I was right. Uh, okay. Well, he kind of spins, he spins it in his hands and catches it by the blade and hands it back to you, Neftari. He's like, as fascinating as a specimen that is, I will not be able to garner any special techniques off of it because I need to practice it myself. Um, Mr. Sadok, is there anything to be said for this quite a brute, brute force weapon? This frost giant's great axe taken from a frost giant seems to crystallize the blood of those that it strikes. Picks it up and, well, it tries to pick it up, but the... the... Like, well, I don't really know much of the inner workings of giant magic myself, unfortunately. I wouldn't be able to replicate this in any way, shape, or form. But I'm aware that most giants are able to imbue their magic weaponry, if it's not a club, anyway. If it's something more martial, then they can imbue some of their own elemental magic so like you are coming up against like you said frost giants so cold magic within the head of the axe itself so that's how it works but 
I don't think I'd be able to replicate that. There's no thinking about that. I wouldn't be able to replicate this. Uh, Jaka, probably not either, I'm afraid. Very brute and primal magic, then. Very have... primal. Have you come across anything particularly special yourself? Unfortunately not. Month, With probably? us being kind of restricted to the keep, we've only been able to make our own stuff. We have very, very myriad of different things that I could offer to you. Um, Weapon-wise, uh, do you have anything in particular to yourself that you would like to have in exchange? I've got different sh swords, different shields. Um, Jaka has managed to ramp up his efficacy with his enchantments. He'd be able to... I, I think the highest he's been able to do is a couple of plus three enchantments. That's interesting. We actually collected quite a few gems. Ropals, Firestones, I think they were. I, b I believe I think Vic's got them. still has them. We did collect a, a rather large amount of gems and gold from a horde of that dragon. Mm, a dragon, and did you get anything else off of it? Uh, I've got a, I think, uh, some... Uh, well, we've got Talons here, some... Some oh, you've got uh, 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 quite well, a few pass them scale. here and let me say, take a look at them. If they're of any good, I could fashion them into armor and weapons and all sorts. You got a few dozen dragon scales, is that right, Neftari? There's all, all, all this stuff here. Um, 25 uh, scales. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is the blood any good? Well, the scales and the Talons, absolutely. I could fashion this into some armor, some like good as like cold resistant armor, and I wouldn't be able to completely replicate the uh, the ice, the cold damage that your great axe does, but I could imbue a sword with a similar kind of effect that does extra damage. If you want, yeah, sure. if, you, if you're willing to, of course, you could leave this stuff with me and I can, it'll take me about a day or two to properly fashion some armor and weaponry, but I can most definitely try and forge it down to something that would be of benefit to you and your other companions as well. Temple, give me your best sword then. The, the, um, the sword I typically use that I've branded Unity is um, a plus three longsword, and I'm sure is nothing special that Sadok Sed hasn't seen before. Uh, however, something does come to mind if potentially these white dragon scales would permit cold resistance. Um, perhaps in future, Victoralis will be spending a lot of time with, with, with dragons of ice. I think it'd be cool. Mm, you don't mind well. the literal wording. As pine then again, I as don't that know what is. kind of armor you would make with this, to be fair, I don't know. Well, it would be a uh, dragon scale mail, of course. Uh, it'd be quite uh, quite hardy and, and a somewhat relative boost to an armor class with the resistance or Depending on how well I make it, it could be complete immunity to cold damage. But sure. again, I'd have to leave the scales here with me and I will I'll try my best to do something the, of the equivalent, of course. I could just see you now suited up in some dragon scale armor, Neftari. Take yeah. it off that white dragon again all by yourself. No, I think Vic would like some armor as well. I'm not entirely sure on, on Vic's armor situation. I think he has had the same set for a while, perhaps. Well, I we'll talked to him. Me, me and Vic are nearly the same size. You could just start making it so we can adapt it to him. Well, if you leave it with me here, I can make a start on it, and then depending on who wants it, I can 
adjust it for that per that person's taste, of course. You start working on that. I was going to say that. So, well, let's see if we can find Rick anyway. Yes, and then perhaps we could maybe visit Jakar and see if an alchemist can do anything with two liters of white ancient white dragon blood. Failing that, I suppose you could make a cocktail. Ha ha. No. So, in the meantime, Victorless, what are you wanting to do? Um, yeah, I oh, know I'm going to be sort of found myself a quiet corner. I'm doing my doing my Tai Chi shit. Okay. Studying my book. Okay. So, um, uh, as you've like just started with that, since it's all going on at the same time, um, you do kind of spot um, Temple and Nethari making their way out into the uh, the great hall, and you can see you guys can see Victorious working on the. Uh, uh, the movements and actions for his uh, um, manual of quickness of action. What do you guys want to do? Do hey, Vic! 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 He's like in some weird, like, fucking Tai Chi pose kind of thing, stood on and, one leg kind of thing. And then all of a sudden you just hear, hey, Vic! And it's just, ugh. Seriously, just slouches over slightly, like, <laughs> oh, God. How's it going? Well, not so bad. Uh, it's just a dug setup. How's your heart? Well, it's holding up. Well, you might be able to do something with those uh, dragon scales. Okay. Um... Hoping that won't be awkward with Ados, but oh, ah, uh, good point. Guess, yeah, yes. you'd have to maybe not wear it around here. But Sedox seem happy to to work with it. I'm sure they appreciate that not all dragons are, um, you know, benign. Well, yeah, it seems that the white dragons are somewhat. Primal compared to it's my company uh, we keep. Please, please do correct me. I, I'm sure you know more of dragons than I, but um, it's my understanding that the um, the breed of dragon uh, of white is non-metallic, and the dragons we are pledged to are metallic, and they have some sort of they, they've had a war for some time, uh, or. At least oh, a brilliant. significant conflict. So perhaps that's why they seem to have little, um, little disregard, little regard for for us having slain one. I was personally quite worried, but oh, we didn't actually mention we'd slain it. We just said we got into an altercation. I, 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 able... I mean, I, I believe the the way I phrased it doesn't leave much to the imagination. Um, I suppose we should be sensitive how we we handle these matters. Um, yeah. Speaking of which, would you like me to give you your sword back now, Victoralis, or perhaps wait till later? Um, I've already shown it to Sadok. He is very, very um, impressed by it. I suppose, given our surroundings, it's better kept out the Under side. Uh... I would be wearing it on my back as I do. You would be able to conceal it within a quiver. Now, I, I am not concerned that we couldn't use the truth and explain why we have a dragon slaying longsword if, if that came to some content. But uh, perhaps best to put it in your bag of holding and have this question not come up. Uh, I agree with you, Temple. I'll, uh... It saved our lives, though, so I have no regrets about using this weapon despite our companions. Well, it's not that I can't use it, but I feel it's better wielded in your hands. But Victorless, Temple, or Nethari, one of you call high or low. No? Hi. I'm taking David. David said low first. Yeah, sorry. 
All right, cool. It's it's actually not necess it doesn't seem as effective as my usual weapon unless it's fighting what it is designed to fight. So Precisely. I have oh. no reason to wield it unless I am with uh fighting someone of the and, and I have no apparent reason to. Um would it be the strongest single weapon that you would hold or does it not matter? No, it's, it's a long sword, of course, so neither I can dual wield nor can. That's his bow. He's good with those. I'm pretty comfortable with my weapons, and I feel my efficiency with them surpasses what this can do. Like you say, though, and so we find ourselves in a uh, an encounter like that again. It will certainly come in useful. I do have some versatility in that I have a an all rounding powerful weapon, a, a weapon of cold damage and brute strength. And I suppose keeping that versatility up isn't a problem. It doesn't tire me to wield it, so I suppose we'll just stay as we are. Well, let's just keep that out of sight for now, shall we? And I'll take the dragon sword and I'll put it into my quiver and hide it. Okay. Yeah, the moment it pops into your quiver, the, uh, the uh, door to the Great Hall opens up and you actually see Zane kind of step out and see you all and gives you all a note and approaches as I hope everything is okay uh, I trust your talks with Adolf's went well with Taurus well it was brief but there are more important things at hand and Coralina is helping Ados yes. with his research right now Unfortunately, my father has kind of drilled it into him that um, priorities have to take up oh, priority. Um, that to any task that is given to him that will help aid the situation that we're all facing is of top priority and must be dealt with first rather than personal issues, such as, unfortunately, communing with yourself. Of course, I understand. Now we were just familiarizing ourselves or re familiarizing ourselves with the uh, with the keep. It seems like it's been a long time. Mm, it's been you know a month is a long time to be away from one's home or base of operations, whichever you would prefer to call it. Maybe what worth us guys? visiting Jakar as we have just visited Stadok some point. Um, well, Jakan unfortunately has taken ill at the moment. Um, not the same plague that we're working with at the moment, but it's an illness that I've done some research on from a foreign land. But he should be up and about um, in the next few hours, anyway, he would be. He should be up and about. I've been helping him as much as I can. Have you? Um, have you been to see Clara yet? No. What kind of thinking? Do we leave an outfit with her to take? It's a long time. Not so long. No, you guys didn't actually, because if I remember correctly, you guys actually delayed your leaving of Silver Drake so that you could collect everything from Clara before you all left. If I remember correctly, but that was before we all st before we started streaming it, so I can't actually go back and be like, yeah, that's that's what happened. So, um, I'm I, I'm pretty sure that's how it went down, but I can't say for certain. Well, unless anyone can show you their notes to prove otherwise, then. <laughs> Evelyn, maybe? Um, oh, I saw no, it, I just, Kayla. Oh, kisses from the husband. Kisses from the husband. I was dinner. Sorry. I've not updated that part of my notes. It just says that they're a tiefling. Oh. 
Great. Oh, great. I seem to remember she was quite attracted to Vic, wasn't she? Uh, she was <laughs> apparently attracted to all of you, so... Yeah. And she had a weird, like, fetish relationship with, um... Aaron. Who was it? Aaron. <laughs> Aaron, yeah. She really enjoyed Aaron's company. Oh, this could be awkward, couldn't it? Well, he's she alive, at least. Yet. If you're going to go and see Clara, look, I, I've got this book to study. If I don't complete it in the next few days, then it's going to be of no use to me. Um, and study I wonder, away. I'm going to take my um, cloak off. Mm-hmm. I'm going to hand it over to Neftari. Mm-hmm. See if there's anything she can do to fix that. Oh, yeah. it lost it lost its um displacement it powers, didn't it? I remember it was yeah. a cloak of displacement, but when the shadow form or what have you of, of, of yourself was drawn from it, it's no longer working, is that correct? That's exactly right. Saying the other me once my sister had obtained the stuff of Carsus seemed to come from this very cloak. Zane uh, mm. something I, I did not uh, mention that's occurred to me that could be of importance, particularly regarding potentially the staff of Carsus. Um mm-hmm. and, and this has just reminded me of it, in fact. Um, I believe the staff of Carsus was used by Zilstina to draw the shadow form of Neftari out of his displacement cloak, and at Neftari. the same time, it's... Not of me, a, a Vic, you mean? Sorry, yes, of Victoralis. Uh, at the very same time, as it's been explained to me, and as it certainly felt very painful, the soul that bonds my magical form together was pulled out of me, ending my life, and that soul materialized as the second Kenjo. Um, the reason for my own life now is I was spoken to directly by my god and given a soul of my own, but that is something of concern hmm. that bears mentioning. It's certainly a demonstration of the power of the Staff of Cassus first hand. Well, from... I didn't know there was anything that could draw souls out of a being like that. There are many... Uh... Artifacts and creatures that can do such a thing, but if I'm if I remember correctly, Victorless, you uh, when we first met, you explained that you events had happened in your life which confused you as to why who you are and where you are and what has actually happened to you, perhaps. Oh, perhaps it's all actually connected. Perhaps it all has happened. And this other you, the shadow you, is just a an echo of what has happened previously. Or I am an echo of them. Potentially. Somehow. The one thing that's given me some comfort is my mother and sister remain one. Mm. Ken but... seems to have only been able to create or summon duplicate versions of those that survived what happened in my memory. Mm. So in some reality, somewhere, those events did happen, and I'm not crazy. Even then, there's perhaps a little more to it. I mean, what more to store the soul of someone than a being such as myself by the very design of them necessitates it. And likewise... Perhaps uh, the events are connected. For you see, if Zilstina was able to draw forth the soul from your body, Temple, and it formed into this second form of Kenjar, perhaps 
And this is purely speculation, but perhaps when the instant incident that happened in your past with Torlas ripped you and your father's souls from wherever it is that you originally came from, your soul was able to inhabit your body here. But because your father's body was here and inhabited by the soul of his own, his other soul found the next best thing, which was an empty vessel. A warforged. What, what exactly happened, Victoralis, um, with regards to your reality? Because my, my recollection of my own past, of the temple I was charged to protect, was persons entering, then darkness, and then me waking up, perhaps centuries later, surrounded by the ash of what once was people in that temple. Well, mine was much the same. Um, when I was much younger, my father had little time for us children. His research and his work was key. He was absent and obviously that gave me a curiosity as to what he was doing. I wanted to spend more time with him. My mother did a fantastic job of raising us, but he was my father. I wanted to be closer to him and stumbled across some research he was working on and somehow activated it. Uh, details I won't go into. <laughs> Raised the city to the ground, I think was the... Oh, sorry. Not city, time, nor place. That's time, but thank you for your contribution. This sounds like the kind of, kind of events that the truth could only be gathered from someone who isn't perhaps worth trusting. The, the effect of what I found, I didn't know at the time. My father was incredibly angry, broke my bones and crushed my body and took me months to recover. And it wasn't until I'd been cast out by him for my indiscretions that I returned to in my city to see him destroy the entire city in the blink of an eye. My mother and my sister both tried to stop him at the last minute, but everything was gone. Does that sound like something a staff of Cassus could do it does to me? Except things have just... played out differently. Your mother and sister aren't stopping him in this reality. But now, something that I have to ask. Did your father have the staff of Carsus in your old reality? I have no idea. Because if he didn't, perhaps that is... A means to control what happened. I was once I was banished. I was gone for so long. He may well have had a stuff or any other artifacts. I wasn't allowed to. Hmm. I wasn't allowed to travel back into the city. My my sister and my mother used to visit me on the encampment that I made with friends. But it wasn't until that day that I'd seen Denfasari again for many years. Oh. All this is at this present moment in time is unfortunately just purely speculation. What has happened has happened. And barring fates or wishes, nothing can really change that. 
I think it's best if we just focus on what we have now and our plans going forward than what has happened in the past. Don't let it consume you, Vitorlas. No, I'm, you just said fate and wishes. Is there any way we could get hold of a, a wish spell? And... There, is, and... there is many ways for someone to obtain the wish spell. Um, some spellcasters are extremely brave enough or foolish enough to transcribe them onto scrolls and sell them for a large fortune. Some wizards are able to innately uh, learn the spell and fates, well, the fates is one of the cards that your friend drew from the deck of many things. Which has been sealed away, I will add, never to be accessed again, well at least not that deck anyway, to be used again, since it's caused a bit of an issue when you were last here. It is yet to cause an issue, I, I understand I'm still yet to be hunted down by a devil at some point, but um, mm, that's cards... kind of path of a course, given our profession. The cards do... Unfortunately, always come true. So, whether you've seen this devil as of yet, or if it's still just stalking you, it will come after you eventually. I have no doubt of that, and I am always prepared for combat. So, well, it's that here. demon that attacked us near the werewolves it was the devil that was after you. But if it was a demon, then it yes, devils and demons are two different things, unfortunately, and the cards are very specific. If it's if it states a devil will be coming after temple, it will be a devil. Um, yes, Victorless, you had a question for me. Maybe this is a question better left for Ados. He seems to be quite the expert, but I'm gonna take the um scroll that we picked up from the mm -hmm. Dragon's Horde. Do you know what this is? Kind of opens it up and just looks it over and closes it abruptly. I would highly recommend that you pass this to your wizard friend and not let anyone else use it unless absolutely necessary. That is a very very dangerous spell scroll and if given into the given to the wrong hands could be quite disastrous i was thinking of learning a bit of wizarding could i have a go no I'm gonna snap that straight back out and put it in my quiver absolutely not i'm afraid mm. no offense man nathatari but your judgment in the past has been questionable to say the least that is a spell you will never, or at least I will never allow you to use. Are you aware of the nature of the spell? Yes. It is the spell, which is a ninth level spell, power word kill. Oh my. Very powerful. Very dangerous. Yeah. Technically, well, be kept very... Now. very in fact, no, I will not say a thing. It's, it would be dangerous for me to even suggest such a thing. Give it to your wizard friend. At least the wizard knows the dangers of these kind of spells. After all, she and Nethtari are the only ones who will be able to ever cast spells of ninth level. And frankly, Nethtari, I just don't trust you with it. Well, Nestar, you were the one that ate the uh, ate the brain of a zombie in our very dungeon. <laughs> I, well, okay. Yes, well, you understand yeah, where well. my concern comes from. Well, not really. I've, I've eaten most things. I, I've eaten a lot that's, more things now than what I had back then. 
that just gonna... doesn't sway my judgment in any way, shape, or form. If anything, that make, means I want to trust you even less with the spell. Because what's to say that you find something that you would think would be particular, would think find particularly tasty to cast this ninth level power word kill spell on it to simply eat something? Well, yeah. Exactly. My point proven. Anyway, I have some business to attend to. I will let you enjoy the rest of your day. No, I'm sorry for disturbing you. Not at all. Thank you. <laughs> Zane just um, he gives you a, a very judgmental look, Natari, of I know exactly what you would do with that spell. Don't try it. And then walks <laughs> away. <laughs> if there's any news on the research or you know, if Edos has some time, then I'm sure Edos will be able to either send a message or news sending to contact you if there is something that he wishes to discuss with you. Discuss? Discuss with you. Discuss. Of course. Thank you. All right, and with that, at the end of the conversation, and a little bit of exposition, we are going to call that for the session for this evening, as that is half past 11. We've been going for three hours. Ugh. And I'm getting a bit of a headache from looking into this fucking LED light that is shining in my face. So we are going to call an end to the session there. Yep. <laughs> anyway, a little bit, a lot more RP, a bit more exposition. What did you guys think? Yeah, it was a little good. slow, but uh, it's all good. Yeah, it's, it's always good to, to slow down after you guys successfully kill an ancient white dragon. Hey Google. Yep. What's left on that timer? <laughs> yeah, like Google. What's left on that timer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's cooking. He's cooking dinner, and he set a timer on the Google yeah. doc or whatever. I, it is. I say that one in Alex all the time. Nope. Just because I said your name doesn't mean you want anything. And you shut up. Anyway, before we go, I do have a few things that I want to uh, point out as I uh, extend this up a little bit. Yes. Um, Con so congratulations on Carolina's baby. Uh, <laughs> no, Carolina uh, may or may not be pregnant. I'm not going to spoil that yet. Um, but no. Uh, first and foremost, Jude, thank you so much for the follow on the uh, the Facebook page. That is greatly appreciated. Um, we've got, uh, now I'm going to apologize if I butcher the pronunciation of your name here, uh, Michael, but I'm going to at least try. Um, Michael Chino Guapo Way. I sincerely hope, I, 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 it's either Michael or Michelle, I have no idea, I, I can never do the good, the spelling of names properly. I'm assuming it's Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L, that's Michael, right? That's Michael, yeah. Yeah, Michael, yeah. Um, so, Michael Chino Guapo Way. I'm, I hope that's the correct pronunciation. Thank you for the follow on the Facebook page as well. And we've got um, um, Ferimpriv1974 on the Twitch stream. Thank you for the follow on Twitch. Uh, we hope you have all enjoyed the session um, this evening. Um, given any circumstance, like any different, cir different circumstances throughout the week. Um, we will hopefully be back for next Sunday, um, but barring that, uh, we hope you en all enjoy the the rest of, well, the beginning of your week. Remember, everyone, we are all in the this whole lockdown situation together, so stay safe, adhere to your social distancing, and as Kayla would say... Wash your goddamn hands. Exactly. Anyway, I hope you have all enjoyed, and we will see you again next week. Bye bye. 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 Ta -ta. Good night.